My phone tells me when something new has arrived. How can the database do the same thing? CQN, DCUN, continuous crew notification and database change notification. What is it? What are they? It's the technical equivalent of having children in the backseat of your car. Because whenever you go on a drive somewhere, what do your kids do? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? They want some sort of feedback, but they want you to push it to them. Ideally, they wouldn't ask the question, but after all, they get bored and they're not seeing anything happening. And they say, oh, yeah, how much longer? How much longer? At least that's what my kids do. It's the equivalent in databases. We have heaps of applications that effectively want to show is there new data. And so they often are written like, is there new data? Is there new data? Is there new data? Is there new data? They keep polling the database aggressively such that one day they'll be able to show you something on your phone like this. Your flight has been delayed because that's what happened to me in South America on a couple of times. This is the kind of concept that CQN and DCM were designed to help solve. The idea that maybe rather than you as an application having to continually come back and see if data has changed, the database could actually let you know if something has changed. DCN, database change notification, was our first cut at this. And that was a pretty simple concept. What you would do is as a developer, you would register interest in the database with an object. You would say, I want to know if the scott.emp table changes as in someone puts some rows in or removes or updates some rows, et cetera. And what would happen is you would be then sent a message and it could be through OCI. So if you could be using .NET and the thick client or Java thick client, you would be actually sent asynchronously a message saying something has happened to the scott.emp table. That's very useful, don't get me wrong, but it really was our first cut. I think it came in in maybe 10.2 because obviously if I have a table of customers, I probably as an application maybe only want to register interest if the customer that's currently on screen has changed its details, not if any other customer. So having it at the object level is perhaps a bit too coarse. So that's where CQN came along, continuous query notification that came in at 11.1, I think. The concept is identical. Let me know when something has changed. But the nice thing was, with CQN, it is the ability to say, only send me a notification, only let me know if the output of a query that I provide to you actually changes. That's obviously far more granular and far more effective and useful than something just at the database change level. At a simplest level answering the question, that's the difference between database change notification and continuous query notification. One is a course operation at the object level. The other one is a much more granular and perhaps effective mechanism at a query level. But just to show that the actual two things are not mutually exclusive, there are some queries in which we can't do that kind of notification. And so we fall back to object notification. And I just thought I'd show you a little demo of how that actually works. The reason I thought I'd show you a demo, another reason is a lot of people have never seen continuous query notification. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to create a table called CQN. It's just a copy of all objects. And I've got an index on there. I'm going to create a table here called notify log. And what that is, is every time we get sent a message saying, oh, oh, something has changed, we're going to write a message to that log. How do we do it? We have a special procedure. It's called mcdonald.callback, and it takes a particular kind of parameter as an argument. It's a particular data type. And inside that parameter, NTFNDS, is all sorts of information about the details of the notification message. But for us, we're just going to simply log a row in that notify log, log saying, yep, something came to us. This is the rather you know, obtuse code that you can use, but it's straight out of the documentation to actually register a query. In line six, I'm saying create some information. I'm going to call a routine called the callback routine every time I get a notification on my query. So that's QOS underscore query. When I get a change to a query result, I want to get received a notification. Then how do I actually register a query? I do it by using a ref cursor. So on line 12, you can see I'm saying opening a ref cursor for the following query. It's my own query plus one extra column. That is the query notification query ID. The reason I do this is if I've registered interest in several queries, that ID lets me identify which particular query I've received a message for. But this is a very simple query. Select owner object name, object type from my table CQN, where the owner equals Scott. So this is an example of I'm, I'm only interested in the rows where the owner is Scott, not just in any change to the table, only the ones where the row is Scott. Let's see how it works. I select the sys timestamp so we can see roughly how long it's take to get a notification. I delete a row from my CQN table, that should be enough to actually fire a notification. 
I commit the row and you can see there's a row in the notify log table. And if we look at the timestamps, it actually came within about a second. Under the covers, what's happening is we're using some AQ infrastructure, the database is, to fire messages off and to run some callback routines. As you can see, CQN is pretty cool. You register interest with a query. When the result of that query would change as a result of DML, you get sent a message and you can react accordingly. I'm doing it all in PL SQL, but it could be a Java application, it could be .NET, it could be anything that actually up in the middle tier as well. Just to show you what happens when you have a query that's sufficiently complex that we can't do query notification. Here's the same copy of the table, the same indexes, the same notify log table, the same procedure. Now I'm going to try a more complicated query. As you can see on line 14, my query of interest is I want to be notified when the number of rows for the uh, rows that have owner equals Scott change. If I run that, I get an error. What it's telling me is I can't guarantee that I can give you a query notification that's always correct. And that's what the you know, QoS query on line eight is saying is, I wanna guarantee that I'll only get notified when that query changes. Count star is an aggregate, and we can't implement that as of 12.2. We have to go to, you can see line eight, what we call the best effort, which means the database will try to satisfy that, but if not, it'll fall back to just change notification. To prove that, I've got 36 rows at the moment in the table for Scott. I delete a row and I insert a row, which obviously simply keeps the count the same, but that query is too complicated, so we still got a notification. That's what we call best effort mode. We didn't guarantee you that we could satisfy that only send a notification if that query changed. But anyway, that's just a quick demo of query-based notification just to show you how it works. I should say though that that is a really useful feature but keep in mindset that it's about getting notifications. This is a really useful feature if you need to be pushed information when data is say rarely changing. Um, you wanna be pushed information such that you can react to it. If you just want to repeatedly avoid polling data, probably a better way is using result cache. Now, most people are familiar with the server side result cache. We use that all the time, it's very popular. If you ever use Apex, we use it everywhere in Apex. But there's a partnering technology called the client result cache. And that works pretty similarly, except on your client application, when you run SQL, you can repeatedly run the same SQLs, throwing them at the database, but it will only visit the database at regular intervals when it thinks the client side information is stale. So if you are just repeatedly polling information and you want to avoid the cost of polling, a better option than relying on notification would be the result caching at the client level. And what that'll do is you can see these are the default values. For me, the, the top one's the default. I've set the bottom one to four megabytes. Once they're both non-zero, as I repeatedly poll the database every three seconds or for up to three seconds, I'll simply avoid the trip to the database. And therefore, I'm effectively nominating how stale I'm allowing my client data to get. So that's a really simple way of having something that currently aggressively polls and doing no application changes and just having it be far less aggressive and the application is unaware.